It's a diagnosis none of us ever wants to hear, cancer. Whether it's you, a family member, or a friend, it does not discriminate. And on this show, we're always looking for ways to ease that burden, either through support groups or treatments. Today, our guest is here to shed some light on gynecological cancers and ways to treat it. Please welcome Dr. Matthew Biagioli, back to The Balancing Act. Good morning. Thanks for having me back. Oh, great to see you again. Dr. Gynecological cancers. Now, when I hear that, to me, that just falls under a huge umbrella. Um, so break it down for me, what falls under that? Okay, so gynecological cancers are basically five different types of cancers. So this includes ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, vaginal cancer, and vulvar cancer. And are all women at risk? All women are at risk. Um, your risk increases with age. Uh, however, you can, there are things you can do to reduce that risk. Uh, and with gynecological cancers, like a lot of other cancers, you know, early detection and early treatment means higher likelihood of cure. Let's talk about cervical cancer specifically. How can we lower that risk? It used to account for one of the highest mortality rates really? uh, amongst cancers here in the U.S. Now, fortunately, with the introduction of the pap smear test and now the HPV detection or human papillomavirus detection, and also with the HPV vaccine, those rates have significantly been reduced. Cervical cancer is one of the most preventable forms of cancer that are out there. And the American Cancer Society recommends that women aged 21 and older undergo routine screening with regular pap smears. And what we've found is that women that are diagnosed with invasive cancer or advanced cancers typically have either foregone uh, routine screening or they haven't done it with any uh, regularity. Now, when you unfortunately get back, let's say um, an abnormal pap smear, mm -hmm. or you hear the news that you have cancer, which is obviously very devastating, very emotional, extremely stressful for a woman. What is the next step? So you really kind of need to discuss that with your doctor and let them guide you through what your options are. With cervical cancer, um, it's very stage dependent. Depending on how advanced that cancer is, it's gonna kind of dictate what treatments are best for you. So if you're really advanced, you gotta be really aggressive. Exactly. So what are some of those treatment options? Um, a surgery? You really kind of need to discuss it with your entire healthcare team to see what specific treatments are going to be the best for you and your specific cancer. And there are a number of different treatment options and some of them you may only need one option and sometimes they may be done in combination with each other. But exactly what you said, surgery is definitely an option. A hysterectomy. You Exactly, so it's a hysterectomy, which means they're gonna take out your ovaries, they're gonna take out your uterus, they're gonna take out the cervix, and they may take out some of the lymph nodes. Other options include chemotherapy, which mm -hmm. are basically giving you drugs, or radiation therapy, specifically brachytherapy. Let's talk about brachytherapy. We've talked about it before. I know it's not, it's not new, but a lot of viewers don't know what it is. Tell me what it is, doctor. Okay, so there is radiation therapy, mm -hmm. uh, and radiation therapy basically causes damage to the DNA of those cancer cells and causes those cancer cells to die. And there are two forms of radiation therapy. There's external radiation therapy, and the way to think of that is you're treating from the outside in. So they're using these high energy radiation beams that are directed from the outside towards that tumor in your cervix to kill those tumor cells. Now typically with external beam radiation therapy, they give low doses of radiation therapy, and that means once a day treatment over the course of many weeks. Uh, alternatively, with brachytherapy or brachytherapy, you're giving the radiation from inside out. Uh -huh. So you're putting the radiation either directly inside the tumor or adjacent to the tumor, so you can give very high doses of radiation to the cancer cell and kill those cancer cells while leaving the rest of the normal tissue relatively untouched. And because you're giving high doses of radiation, it means fewer treatments, usually in terms of somewhere between two to five treatments. And now brachytherapy may be done by itself, but more typically it's done in combination, at least for patients with advanced cancers, after external radiation, and usually in combination with some form of chemotherapy. Great information. Stay right there, doctor, because I have a few more questions regarding brachytherapy. We have to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to discuss the benefits of brachytherapy, so stay right there. Welcome back, everyone. Before the break, we were discussing the advanced cancer treatment, brachytherapy. With us once again is Dr. Matthew Biagioli, who specializes in radiation oncology and is here to help us learn some more. Doctor, I know we talked a little bit about brachytherapy, but I'm fascinated about how you described uh, from the inside out. Tell me about that again. Yeah, so traditional radiation therapy works by 
radiation going from the outside in, right. so it means it's got to go through some normal tissue to get there. With brachytherapy, it's basically placing the radiation inside the cancer, so you're radiating from the inside out, and you're protecting that normal organ. And what are the benefits of brachytherapy? So there's a lot of benefits to brachytherapy. Uh, first of all, it's a very effective and cost-effective way of treating cancer. Okay. Um, it's been shown to be highly effective in the treatment of cervical cancer, and long-term studies have shown that women that undergo brachytherapy as part of their cervical cancer treatment have better cancer-free survivors. Really? Additionally, because it's being delivered from the inside, it means that there's lower toxicity, mm -hmm. and it's state-of-the-art. Even though it's been around for years, the brachytherapy that we do today is very different than what we did even five, ten years ago. And not only effective, but mm -hmm. I, I can imagine here convenient as well because it's done differently. Exactly. Because the radiation dose is so high mm -hmm. and so focused, it means fewer treatments, which means shorter duration of treatment, which in cervical cancer is actually very important because we know if we can shorten those treatment times, that the likelihood of cure is better. Now, something that's very important here is side effects. Yeah, so with all treatments of cervical cancer, there's some form of side effects. With brachytherapy, if you think about it, the cervix is kind of wedged right in between the rectum and the bladder. So it's possible that you might develop side effects like you feel like you have a GI bug or even possibly like you have a urinary tract infection or an overactive bladder. Now you mentioned earlier, and we touched upon this uh, regarding brachytherapy, treating cancers of different body sites. Uh, what, do they, what do they include? I mean, is it everywhere? Yeah, so essentially it's head to toe. Okay. Um, so we're talking lung cancer, we're talking about rectal cancer, we're talking about esophageal cancer. What about breast cancer? You got it. It's one of the main uses for brachytherapy is actually within breast cancer. And how does it work there? With women that are undergoing treatment for breast cancer, there are two main surgical options. So there's one, which is where they have to remove the entire breast. Um, but alternatively, you can preserve the woman's breast and with a different type of surgical procedure called a lumpectomy. And what that involves is just removal of the tumor and then the normal breast tissue just slightly around the tumor. Now, if you undergo a lumpectomy, you need some form of radiation to reduce the likelihood that that cancer comes back. Traditionally, that's been with external radiation, which requires five to six weeks of treatment, or alternatively, it can be done with brachytherapy, which may only require one treatment, wow. or as few as five treatments. What a great option, then. At the end of the day here, it's all about education and giving women that other option, because it's been around. Even though it's been around for 35 years, it's ever-evolving, and the technology that they use today for brachytherapy is state-of-the-art and as cutting-edge as many of the other technologies we use to treat cancer. Thank you so much. Come back again anytime to talk more about brachytherapy. And if you'd like more information on brachytherapy, again, it's brachytherapy. It's affordable. It's an effective treatment option to treat cancer. Visit our website, thebalancingact.com. That's thebalancingact.com. And follow us on Facebook.